Check, a, check out cement stocks. Take a look at these cement stocks. They have had quite a run so far this year, boosted by China's near $600 billion stimulus package uh, with infrastructure projects, a part of that focus. And in fact, uh, you see China National building up 100 percent, China Shanshui up 201 percent. Well, guess what? We have uh, one of the top ranked analysts on these stocks. In fact, the whole sector on Chinese cement and also paper. Andrew Dale from Macquarie joins us on the program. And some of his stock picks have yielded returns of as much as a hundred percent. Good Tuesday morning to you. Morning to you. How well, are you? let's talk about the uh, cement uh, sector, shall we? Because there are concerns about pricing, but it seems that pricing has now come back. How do you see things? Yeah, look, I mean, prices have definitely strengthened a little bit in the southern and, and eastern regions and the central regions of China. They've been pretty weak here to date, which is kind of expected given one of the largest drivers of cement prices is actually the coal price, which is off significantly on a year-on-year -year basis. So I think we, we've seen very much a, a situation that we expected. Seeing a little bit of strength now returning, though, which is positive mm -hmm. for, for those southern regions. Northern regions have been strong anyway, so that's played out according to plan. In fact, perhaps a little bit stronger than we'd expected. Mm -hmm. But now, yeah, cement prices in the south starting to see a little bit of increase. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Considering we had uh, the government announce uh, $600 billion in stimulus <laughs> and most of that going into infrastructure. How come cement uh, prices have been depressed? Well, cement's got a, a couple of interesting things. Firstly, the cement market in China is structurally a little bit unsound given the large number of participants. So there's always been supply-demand issues, particularly in the south and central regions. So you should fully expect prices to not be too strong all the time. Mm -hmm. what, what you really needed to see was demand come through through this infrastructure. You've seen volume so far for this year up 16 per cent year on year and that's going to help to provide some strength in pricing but you shouldn't assume too much because there is still supply issues in some of those markets. Mm -hmm. What about the real estate market? There's talk that uh, you see buildings, these building companies again restarting some of these projects that they've put on hold. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is that going to help <clears throat> push up cement prices? Yeah well I mean the property sector kind of has been the missing link to what we're we've been seeing at the moment. We're obviously well aware that infrastructure is coming through. We're well aware of some of the other industries that are seeing growth. But the property market has been um, weak this year. Mm -hmm. Seasonally it would be weak in the third quarter so you'd start to see some recovery into the fourth quarter and that should help to provide a little bit more strength into the cement market, particularly in that south and central region which mm -hmm. I think people forget but that is 65 to 70 percent of cement demand which is indicative of the fact that that's where a lot of the property construction and real estate is actually happening. Well, given the uh, optimism then that uh, you seem to be pointing out, does that mean that a retail investor is saying, thinking, should I get into China Resources Cements uh, IPO? Well, what would you say to them? Well, look, I mean, China Resources Cement IPO is really a play on the, on the south market and I guess more of a leverage into a recovery into some of those markets. Now, its specific markets have been reasonable in terms of pricing, mm -hmm. but I think the way we picture the whole cement market is that if you want to buy into leverage for recovery, you buy into the south and central areas. If you want to buy known strength, which are markets that are already performing very well, you look at the northern markets, stocks like Shanshui, BBMG and Sinema. Mm -hmm. So what is the best play in the uh, Chinese uh, cement uh, sector right now? Is it Anhui Khan, one of the big uh, leaders? Well, look, Anway is clearly the, one of the largest stocks, probably the best in terms of its fundamentals, very low cost producer, widespread sort of platform within China, also a very low gearing on its balance sheet and, and strong management team that has executed well. I'd actually say it's probably getting a little bit towards its peak values, particularly if you look at it on an EV per tonne. It is trading at around $100 a tonne, which is expensive. We'd probably push clients more towards some of the smaller mid-sized companies like Shanshui trading on around $50 to $60 a tonne, BBMG trading on around $50 to $60 a tonne. Mm -hmm. They probably offer investors a little bit more value at this stage. Okay, well let's uh, focus in quickly on, on Anhui Conch first off, as you said, one of the big players in the sector. Let's uh, bring up your target price on the stock. You're looking for 60 Hong Kong dollars, uh, which is actually a bit more bullish than uh, our analyst survey calling for 53 bucks. So you want to call it that even. Mm. But So what makes you more bullish, shall we say, than uh, other people who are watching this sector and this stock particularly? Oh, look, I, I just continue to think that Anhui Conch deserves to trade at a premium. To, to the other stocks in the sector. It does have a very good track record and, and I sort of view it as a stock that has very low execution risk. So they do state their strategy, they do follow through on it, they've got a, a pretty good platform for growth, low cost operator and a good organic growth model. So I think $60 is perhaps a little bit on the, on the high end of valuation, yeah. however we're quite comfortable pushing it to those levels. Okay, well yesterday Anhui Kanch was actually one of the most heavily shorted stocks mm. here on the Hong Kong exchange. What does that say to you? 
Gee, I mean, <laughs> investors are, are always very, uh, very hard to predict in terms of what they're, they're, they're doing. But look, I think that you, you saw here today, as you mentioned, JP Morgan going underweight China. I think there is some uncertainty in relation to China into the fourth quarter. We're personally feeling quite comfortable in terms of the underlying demand story for steel and cement stocks. So I think that, you know, we're comfortable with that story. Shorting the stocks, look, I think cement's not going to provide you with too much downside, quite frankly. Shorting stocks like the steel space, they're, they're much more volatile, mm -hmm. perhaps provide you with a little more, more return in that sort of trading environment. But I, I wouldn't be personally shorting the, no. the stocks at this stage. You're advising against that. So, okay, well, let's get on to one of your, uh, I guess, your preferred plays on the, on the cement sector in China, and that's uh, China Shan Shui, because returns mm. uh, have been... 79% if, if uh, investors had listened to your advice, in fact, you're the number one mm. ranked analyst on China Shan Shui. But let's check out China Shan Shui's uh, return so far, 200% year to date. And again, your price target pretty bullish compared to our survey. Uh, what's going to drive Shan Shui up uh, to seven Hong Kong dollars from here? Yeah, well, look, Shan Shui is actually qu quite a simple story, N not too dissimilar to Conch. It is, um, it's, it's much more of a regional cement play, so based in Shandong and also having some exposure into Liangning. Mm -hmm. And it really is a story where the, the Shandong marketplace has a lot of old capacity, obsolete cement kilns, mm -hmm. and this has an opportunity to continue substituting out that old cement capacity and putting in new capacity that will help to, um, help to in improve the environment, but help to, help to drive them into a good period of growth. Yeah, also, it's yeah. some huge EPS <clears throat> growth. I'm looking at the numbers here, 109% for the yeah. past 12 months. Can they keep that up? Yeah, well, I mean, you've got to remember with these companies, a lot of the growth is actually just capacity additions. So when you're increasing your, your actual capacity um, material by 30 to 40 percent and you also add in a small price increase, which we forecast in those northern markets, you know, it's not difficult to get quite strong EPS okay. growth.